80-69. A huge free throw discrepancy, Corey, in that game. Carolina was 36 of 39. If there's a repeat of that here today, Tar Heels gonna head back to Chapel Hill with a win. It's the Wolfpack with the basketball first as we are underway at PNC Arena. And this dynamic backcourt, Terquavion Smith, second in the league in scoring. Jarkel Joyner, 10th in the league. And as a matter of fact, Corey, in this game, we've got five of the top 10 scorers individually in the ACC. Actually, three of those guys for North Carolina, two for, for NC State. And one of those guys, Jarkel Joyner, gets started off the right way, knocking down a big bucket. Here is today's starting lineup, brought to you by K. Jewelers. Huber Davis talked about some changes perhaps after the loss on Monday, but the starting lineup at least remains the same for now, Corey. It remains the same, but pay attention to the rotations and guys coming in as we get opportunity to look at the Wolfpack starting lineup. Jarkel Joyner leading it off, a guy who went out and got a triple-double against your alma mater mm -hmm. last time, but all in a loss to Syracuse earlier this week. Wolfpack lost at the Dome last time out Tuesday, 75-72 for Joyner. 15 points, 11 and 10. Corey Alexander, I defy you to watch DJ Burns play basketball and not smile. Yeah, well, you have to smile then because he's smiling half the time. DJ Burns enjoys himself on the floor, loves this matchup of Burns. Armando Baycott, of course, who is the standard in the ACC at the five position. And right now, NC State off to a great start with Joyner and Burns getting an early bucket. And you saw Greg Gant getting the start again today. We will see Jack Clark come off that bench now that Kevin Keats' team is a little more whole. Clark played so well on Tuesday, 31 minutes for the Wolfpack. Here's the matchup inside to Baycott working on Burns. And the layup goes for number five in Carolina Blue. And NC State is one of the few teams that can afford to guard Armando Baycott one-on-one -on -one because they have so many guys that they can throw at him at that position. Off the bounce. Turquavion Smith has his first two. Now, Corey, in the loss Monday to Miami, North Carolina fell into habits that they have had all too often this year, not getting the ball to Baycott. He played 33 minutes, took only six shots as Davis connects. How do you consistently get that message through to the Tar Heels that Baycott has to be more involved? Well, I believe that they know that. One of the issues, again, the game against Miami was the fact that oftentimes he was going up against North Chattel Mere, who would not allow him to get the post position after Quavion Smith knocks down his second straight bucket. And again, one of the things we also have to remember about the first matchup between these two teams, to Quavion Smith left the floor on a stretcher. He did not finish that game. And of course, without him on the floor, it changes everything for the Wolfpack. Pete Nance being hounded. Leaky Black turns down the shot. Inside it goes to Baycott with five on the shot clock. The double team gives him trouble. Back out front. Black's going to have to shoot it. He's got it. First three for Leaky Black. And one thing, when you look at these Tar Heels, they're no stranger to a rowdy environment here coming to PNC Arena. They know that they are the hated rival when these two teams get together. DJ Burns denied. Baycott. And then we've got a little extracurricular, perhaps. We've got a traveling violation called on Baycott as Burns went down. And these two guys have had a mix-up before. As you see, Armando Baycott with the great defense to block the shot, unable to keep the basketball inbounds to travel the turnover. But at that point for Mondo, it was more important to allow DJ Burns to know you're not getting that off on me. DJ Burns in his third collegiate stop. Spent a year as a red shirt at Tennessee. Here he is off the pass. I asked Kevin Keats this morning before the game, how do you describe that shot? Leaky Black on the leak out with the slam. He's got five. I see what you did there, and I also see what Caleb Love did. The nice kick ahead pass running more. That's what Huber Davis wants to see. He wants for the Tar Heels to play faster. Feels like they're walking the ball up the floor too often, not getting any easy shots. Burns sets the re-screen for Joyner. These are two of the three highest scoring teams in the league behind only Miami. They love to get up and down if they can, although the Tar Heels haven't done as much running as perhaps they would like this year. I do Casey Morsell going end to end.
Caleb Love with the shot clock effect, you're able to score in the paint. And I know I'll sound like a broken record, but when you think about Caleb Love, when he's attacking, getting downhill, he is a different player, puts a different level of pressure on the opposing defense, oftentimes setting up the three-point shooters, making those better shots. Each team with four scorers already in the first five minutes. Here's Traquavion Smith, sophomore from Greenville, North Carolina, averaging over 18 points per game, pulls the trigger. A high volume and highly effective three-point shooter misfires, and the personal goes against D.J. Burns. Timeout here at a sold-out PNC Arena. Coming to PNC, taking on the rival Wolfpack, where coached by, of course, Kevin Keats, who's done a tremendous job this season, a candidate for ACC Coach of the Year, but only a 2-9 and nine record against the rival Tar Heels all time. Well, State has lost two of its last three, having attempted a total of just 17 free throws. So much like in the first matchup in Chapel Hill, the Tar Heels have been getting to the line much more than NC State lately. Seth Trimble, Puff Johnson have come into the game for Carolina. And we also get a first look at the aforementioned Jack Clark, the six foot eight inch grad transfer from LaSalle, number five in white for state. Morsell. And he gets his own miss. Shot clock down to 18. Working on Trimble. He's got a height advantage. Shoots over top of the freshman who grabs the rebound. That's uh, Trimble's benefit. He is a tremendous defender, a guy that Hubert Davis can rely on to go out. And I won't call him a stopper but yet make things difficult for the opponents on the other end of the floor. Davis with a long two. I rebound bounces up on the top of the backboard. We've got a tremendous officiating crew here this afternoon. Ted Valentine, Pat Driscoll, and Clarence Armstrong who makes the call. There's Teddy B. And off the foul, full court pressure by North Carolina. And that is a wrinkle that you're seeing from North Carolina. You talked about Hubert Davis, talked about mixing it up. That's not something they've done much this season, especially trapping on the inbounds pass. And I believe one of the reasons why Coach Davis is doing that is to try to create some turnovers and be able to get this North Carolina State team to play a little bit uncharacteristically. Five to shoot. No problem for Jarkel Joyner, but it's an air ball. Quickly up ahead, here's Armando Baker beating everyone bound down the floor. When your point guard takes a shot, there has to be defensive balance. Someone else, your wings, have to be able to get back. Armando Baycock contested the shot, which was an air ball by Joyner. Leaky Black keeping his head up with the kick-ahead pass for the easy two. Armando with four early points. He had a big game in the first matchup against State. Right on cue, Jack Clark off the bench with some instant offense. Yeah, welcome addition, getting Jack Clark back into the lineup. This young man was a starter for the majority of the beginning of the season until his injury, December the 30th, missed 10 games. And Kevin Keyes is happy to have him back in the lineup. Yeah, he returned against Boston College last Saturday. Seems to be full strength off of that groin injury. Fourth turnover by North Carolina. Morsell trying to make him pay. Davis using the Baycott screen and he was fouled much to the chagrin of Turquavion Smith. The re-screen RJ Davis getting to a spot difficult to see if there's contact with the hand on that one. But RJ Davis the ACC's leader free throw shooting getting an opportunity to put two on the board. He scored 26 in the game last month in Chapel Hill, including 14 for 14 from the line. Coming up next at 3 Eastern here on ESPN, Marcus Sasser and number two Houston host Kendrick Davis in Memphis. The Tigers are on Joe Lenardi's bubble. Another big game with two weeks left in the regular season. Selection Sunday, Corey, three weeks from today. Going to be an exciting finish for many, many teams, many, many conferences. Over these next three weeks, going to be an exciting finish for the North Carolina Tar Heels to see if they will be a part 
of the Big Dance Boy. on Selection Sunday it right now. It's hard to Look believe those words come out of your mouth. It, it, it really is hard to believe the preseason number one team nationally. But this team has not gelled defensively, which is the reason why they were able to get all the way to the title game a year ago. Everyone wants to talk about the three-point shooting and this, but North Carolina is still averaging close to 80 points per game. It's not about the offense, about their defense, especially during those 10 losses. Tyler Nichol has come out, number 24 for North Carolina. Jarkel Joyner into the paint, brings it back out. Clark finds an opening in the defense, missed the shot though. Pete Nance with a defensive rebound. Trimble off the Nance screen gives it back to the Northwestern grad transfer and we've got a traveling violation apparently he didn't put it on the deck before moving his feet well Mondo Baycott didn't have to put it on the deck getting out on the fast break the kick ahead pass from Leaky Black finds Baycott for the easy dunk but not to be outdone the Wolfpack moving the ball well Jack Clark finds Casey Moore sell in the corner, and his three is. This was the actual rivalry. We talk now about Duke and North Carolina being the biggest rivalry in basketball. This was the rivalry first, and the opportunity to play some great basketball between these two traditionally storied programs that carry a number of national championships to their credit. How do you describe the two fan bases? How are they different, Corey, between Carolina and State? Well, when you think about NC State, the first thing that comes to mind is the word passion. They are the most passionate fans in the ACC. And again, that's one of the areas of when you come into this building, you've got to be prepared to take on their crowd as well. DJ Burns with the beautiful move against Pete Nash to spin and the finish, much to the delight of a rowdy crowd here at PNC Arena. Well, I asked Coach Keats before the game, do you call that? When he posts up 25 feet from the basket and backs his man down, he goes, I do it, but I want to be able to get credit because I'm a guard coach, so I want him to have the ball out there. I called that play. <laughs> Fair enough. As Pete Nance goes right back at DJ Burns with the jump hook. And nice play by Nance right there. Winning that battle and really more importantly giving Amando Baycott some value rest time not having to battle with DJ Burns the entire game Here we go again Can Nance keep him out of the lane Nance wins that battle But as you see those plays as RJ Davis attacks the basket unable to get the finish Hubert Davis will be fine with DJ Burns making one out of every two shots because if that happens one of the things you do is you limit to Quavion Smith and Jarkel Joyner's opportunities from beyond the three-point arc. Joyner takes a seat on the North Carolina State bench. LJ Thomas is in the game out there with Morsell, Burns, Clark, and with the basketball, Preseason first team all conference to Quavion Smith, who for just the third time this season, fourth time in his two years, wearing some custom shoes that he's had designed and painted by NC State art and design major Will Whitley. Turquavion wears them only for special opponents like North Carolina and Duke. And those two schools, by the way, didn't recruit him. And so that's part of it. He wore it once for his college debut last year and doing it again today for just the third time. This is a big game for him. Absolutely a big game. And of course, you grow up in the state of North Carolina. You want to be recruited by Duke, by North Carolina, by NC State, Wake Forest, by all the big schools. And as, of course, Dequavion has mentioned, not recruited by Duke, not recruited by North Carolina, but clearly good enough to play in those at those both those schools. Found a perfect home here at NC State and is the fastest player to a thousand points in the past 15 seasons in the ACC and he was honored pregame for that before this partisan crowd for North Carolina State Baycott faces up a little strong on that jumper Nance with a weak side rebound gives to Leaky Black who has it poked out of bounds by Thomas Carolina will keep with 17 to shoot 
Do you understand the reasoning behind why it's the past 15 seasons? You know what's, what's so significant 15 years ago? Hmm. The expansion? No. Um, I don't. Implementing the one and done. So uh, therefore, very few guys stick around to score their thousand points in their sophomore season because they're gone as freshmen. Yep. Kevin Keats is happy to have Dequavion Smith back for a second season here with the pack. And he said when Terquavion put his name into the draft last spring, it was 50-50 whether he was going to come back or not. But he took to heart the things the NBA folks told him, how to expand his game, and those things have shown out this season. Well, I can tell you, I was actually at the NBA Combine where Terquavion Smith in his first game knocked down six three-pointers. And we had Kevin Keats on air after that game, and I looked at Kevin Keats and basically you know, with the, with a little bit of eye contact saying he's not coming back, mm -hmm. <laughs> just so you know. But of course, those two guys have a great relationship. They had more than enough conversations and Tequavion decided to come back. And I believe it's going to benefit him doing so. And he's one of those guys as you've got to foul on the perimeter. Tequavion is who seems to me to genuinely enjoy the college experience. And I, he wanted to stay at NC State. He's a loyal guy, stayed at the same small high school for four years. He wanted to come back work on his game and be a member of the Wolfpack at least one more year. And he also wanted to win, and they've done much more of that this season. The same reason why Armando Baycott came back to North Carolina. Davis gets his own miss, and Burns picks up the personal foul, his second. And those are the things that frustrate Coach Keats. And on that play, it was simply D.J. Burns being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nothing he truly did to earn that foul other than try to box out Armando Baycott. Someone else allowed R.J. Davis to come in and get that rebound, but the contact from D.J. picks up that second foul. Most likely we may not see him for the remaining 8.33 of this first half. And that means Ebenezer Dewana comes in, the 6'11 junior from Ghana, for some extended minutes in this big game. In Dushan Mahorchik he is out indefinitely with that knee injury, and that has been part of why... Burns has been able to play more. Offensive foul. The Tar Heels turn it over. Personal number one on Pete Nance. And just a smart play by L.J. Thomas recognizing that he was not going to be to contend with Pete Nance if he shoots that basketball, but smart enough to get his body in the right position, absorb that contact, pick up the offensive foul, and maintain possession for his team. Joyner brings it up. Played a couple of years at Cal State Bakersfield, then went home to Oxford, Mississippi, and played with the Rebels before transferring here as a graduate. The Quavion going to work, challenging the big man, but he couldn't finish. Here come the Tar Heels the other way. Leaky Black with his head on a swivel. Had it poked away. Smith with Joyner to his left. He soars to the rim for two. Largest lead of the ball game so far, five for NC State. Caleb Love off the nice fake, able to finish in the lane. But that's what North Carolina can get when you choose to double team Armando Baycott. He's a willing passer, gets it out, and now Caleb basketball is playing four. Caleb Love's playing four and three on the other side. Davis up on Joyner. Helped by Puff Johnson who goes down. Clark with that puts up the three and it's way off the mark. A lot of talk in these parts about how the Tar Heels are on that bubble. Joe headline in this game at the moment, Joey Brackets, is Carolina. Where do they stand and what do they need to do today and going forward to get into the field of 68? Who would have thought when the season started, Doug, that we'd be talking about North Carolina as a bubble team. But here they sit as the very first team out of the field, uh, certainly an unusual position and even worse than they were a year ago when they got hot late, became an eight, and of course went all the way to the national championship game. This game is a must for the Tar Heels, and then they've got to finish strong, of course, and make sure they suffer no bad losses to stay on the right side of the bubble, and that's not been easy for UNC thus far. 
And Joey Brackets, of course, you've been doing this much earlier this year. You know, you started in January. Normally, you start get this going late January, mid-February. Early January, you were already at it. You send us emails all hours of the night, and we thank you for those resources because you allow us to keep up with how for the importance of many of these games. And I ask you, when you look at North Carolina and their schedule and their wins versus or lack of wins versus quad ones, is that the main area of concern for you as to why they're in your first four out right now? It, it, it's not just an absence in quad one, zero and eight. All of their best wins have been uh, home or neutral. They've not won a game against a tournament team other than NC State at home that really causes you to jump up and say, hey, this is a tournament team. I, I have to think that if we weren't talking about North Carolina, and, and I try and take all bias out of this, but, you know, I'm human too, just like the committee members, and I know what Carolina was supposed to be. Uh, I wonder if they'd even be this close. 0 and 8 is almost an unthinkable number, and their other metrics don't add up to that. I mean, it's not a great offensive team or a great defensive team, but it's better than 0 and 8 in quad one and certainly better than a 500 ACC team, which is what they'll be if they lose today. Well, Joe, for the Wolfpack, you've got them on the eight line right now. What do you think the ceiling is for this NC State team? They've gotten as high as a seven, and certainly with a deep run in the ACC tournament, they could be a six, but let's not kid ourselves. This is not a great ACC this year. The coattails of the league aren't very long, and they're not going to elevate teams very high on the seed list. Look at all those huge win opportunities in a league like the Big 12, right? And they got five of the top 12 teams in the committee's reveal yesterday. Nothing like that is going to happen with the ACC. And I know they overcame it and put two teams in the Final Four. But when you're getting eight seeds in the Final Four, that is really a hard way to make a living. This is a conference that hasn't had a one seed since 2019 when it had three. It's been a lot of downward trending since then. And Joey Brackets, of course, you know I'm an ACC guy, so when I hear, you know, the words, this is not a strong ACC season, but there are eight teams, and there were nine, now eight teams ranked in the top 70 in the net in the ACC. When you look at that, how does that not taken into consideration when you talk about the strength of a conference when the NCAA net looks at this conference and having eight to nine teams who are in their top 70? I'm still seeing a lot of mediocrity, Corey. Uh, maybe it's the lack of elite teams at the top and the lack of quad one opportunities relative to a regular ACC season. But this is really the second year in a row that this has happened. And if anything, the bounce back that we all expected simply hasn't occurred. You know, if I had said in October, Virginia, Duke, Carolina, they could all be one seeds, no one would have batted an eye. But now, none of them are going to be close to the top line. So, again, I think it's the lack of elite teams at the top that is causing the rest of the league to not have the great opportunities they normally do. And Joe, Corey's beloved alma mater, Virginia, you've got them on the three line now, and I heard you say about a week ago that you didn't think they could go any higher. Is that still the case? Yeah, there's a pretty big gap between uh, every number three seed right now, except for Tennessee. From 10 on down, th 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 there's a top nine, if you will, and the Cavs fall just on the other side of that. And I would say again, uh, I think they're dangerous, and certainly in the tournament they've proven how dangerous they can be in terms of both talent and style. But I don't think there's anybody out there going, I'm afraid to play UVA as they were several years ago. Well, when you look at the different conferences, and of course you mentioned the Big 12, and then you talk Tennessee, who I believe have lost now four out of their last five games. I know they've struggled down the stretch here recently. Is the SEC that far ahead of the ACC to where you look at that way? Because in your bracketology, the SEC doesn't have as many teams as the ACC does in the mix, correct? 
No, the SEC has eight teams in the field now that Kentucky has played its way back in. And look, about the nicest way I can say it is, the team that was leading the ACC for the bulk of the season was Clemson, and they still have a great ACC record, and they're out of the field. Like, that's never happened with the ACC. Like, we can talk around it, and I can try to sugarcoat it, but power rating-wise, this league right now is behind the Mountain West, and that has never happened in all the years I've been doing bracketology. Juba Davis not happy with something going on right now. I believe that was a foul on R.J. Davis stepping in. He felt like that was should have been an offensive foul. Continues to have conversation with Pat Driscoll on the sideline. Of course, that's never going to be welcome here at <laughs> PNC. And you see R.J. Davis still moving towards his left on that position we get a great angle at it but i believe that's the right call but of course huber davis wants no, no explanation on that right now no well we are thrilled to be here in this building sold out crowd in uh, raleigh north carolina and so glad to have joe lenardi in his bunker do you ever get out of the bunker this time of year joe yeah i get to go to bristol this week for a few days so we're going to call that a vacation in bucolic <laughs> connecticut and i realize some of the comments about the acc are are likely to never get me invited to be on an acc game again uh, <laughs> but it's not personal i'm just the messenger of what the committee's going to tell us three weeks from today yeah joy brackets and, and again I, I hope no one takes it as though you're saying it personally you've been doing this and of course you have a tremendous amount of credibility which is why we all look to you as that resource and as an acc guy i ask the question simply because i want to know does it mean that i disagree i just look at this league and talk about the fact that hey when you play in this league and you play against the quality programs and the coaching that you go up against on a daily basis I believe that that should be something that should be considered much higher than a non-conference schedule, especially when you look back and you see the Big Ten where they are, but yet the ACC beat the Big Ten and the ACC Big Ten Challenge, the final one for this season. Those are the things that often confuse me, but I agree with you 100%, and I always go to you as a resource, my man. Thanks, Corey. I'm not jumping up and down for the Big Ten either. They haven't won a title <laughs> since the year 2000. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much. And again, keep those emails coming. We will talk to you a lot. Over John said, eight turnovers committed by Carolina so far, none for the Wolfpack. And Sean made a great point. You know this when you come into this building. You know exactly what North Carolina State is trying to do. It's been the case ever since Kevin Keith stepped foot into this building and took over this program. They want to turn you over. And you come into this game recognizing that you have to be strong with the basketball and make plays that benefit your team in comparison to benefiting the other team right now. And that's the case for North Carolina. 12 points off of those eight turnovers for NC State. A couple of free throws for Leaky Black. He's got seven. And before the break, Dewana picked up his second foul. So we've got to monitor that. Both he and DJ Burns with two as the two primary bigs for State. And right now, Kevin Keith's going to have Greg Gant stepping in at the five spot guarding Armando Baycott, but we talked earlier, they have a number of guys that they can put out there to try to defend Baycott because when it's all said and done, twos don't kill you. Threes crush you. And I tell you what, Jack Clark is an excellent rebounder. You saw him fly in there at six foot eight from the perimeter to keep the play alive and pick up the assist. And offensive rebounding, and that's the staple of North Carolina that we also haven't seen this year. They've always been one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league, but you see it's NC State coming up, getting the second chance points. Love pulls the trigger, around and out. Baker had it poked away. Morcell tries for a second in a row, and it's way off the mark. And you talked about Jack Clark coming in, covering a lot of ground, but keeping his head up, finding Casey Morcell. She was 43% from beyond the arc at the top of the key, knocking down a big three 
to extend the lead to five for the Wolfpack. That's already six rebounds for Clark Corey coming off the bench. Yeah, Kate's kept, Coach Keats is happy to have him back in the lineup. But look at NC State. Whenever they get the basketball off of the defensive rebound, they're keeping their head up, looking to push. And whenever Jaquavion Smith gets a good look, he's taking it, unable to knock that one down. Second in the league in scoring, eighth in assists, fourth in steals, eighth in three-point shooting percentage. And he shoots them in volume. I think it's easy to say he's having a first team all ACC season. No right? question. Black off the shot fake, dumps it off. Baycott with a chance for three. Nice play by Leaky Black right there. The head fake to get to Quavion Smith to fly by and then playing two on one basketball, putting Grant Gant in a tough spot. And Clark coming over, no match with Baycott when he catches the basketball that deep in the painted area. Leaky Black continues to play impressive basketball on both ends of the floor for the Tar Heels. And Corey, that's number two as well on Jack Clark. That's another thing that uh, Armando Baycott does very well is draw fouls, get himself to the line, and get his opposing big men in some foul trouble. Well, you mentioned early, North Carolina shot 39 free throws in the first matchup between these two teams, 36 of 39. And it was a huge discrepancy between both groups. And right now, North Carolina doing a great job getting to the free throw line as well. That's what's kept them in this game. Smith on the step back. By my count, that might be the fourth air ball of the game by State. Morsell off the front iron. All the things you have to do over here, now you're counting air balls? There's been so many. <laughs> when was the last time you saw four and a half by one team on their home floor? I've been talking to Joey Brackets. I really haven't seen four of them, but must not have been paying attention during that stretch. <laughs> Love. Beautiful stroke, and he looks and gets 18. He thought that Pat Driscoll should have called a foul. Pat thought otherwise, and a technical against Caleb Love. But the technical was not just from that play alone. It's been from a number of conversations throughout this game. Caleb Love stepping out. Feels like there's contact. We don't get a chance to see it from that angle. Here we'll see. Is there contact on the arm? Regardless, it wasn't enough for Pat Driscoll to make the call. But there have been a number of conversations between Caleb Love and the officials throughout this game that Pat Driscoll simply said, I've had enough, and I don't think there was enough contact there to have worn today foul. And so Caleb Love will take a seat at the end of the Tar Heels bench. Tyler Nickel has returned for Carolina. Nichols out there with Black, Davis, Trimble, and Baycott. See, that technical foul is actually the second foul on Caleb Love, so he's going to take a seat and miss the remainder of this first half to make sure he doesn't pick up one here on the defensive end. Clark and Dewana back out there, both playing with two fouls for State. Nice rebound by R.J. Davis. And North Carolina, with all the turnovers, they haven't played well, but one point away and the opportunity to take a lead here, possibly to get into the halftime locker room. Baycock from the high post brings it back out. Davis Trimble for three. Long rebound to the corner goes out of bounds untouched. Here's our next ACC Big 12 Monday doubleheader at 7 Eastern Kyle Filipowski and Duke host L. Ellis in Louisville at Cameron Indoor. And then Jalen Wilson in number five Kansas take on number 22 TCU. Both games are right here on ESPN and the app. Timeout North Carolina State will take it with them. Good ball game with 18 seconds remaining in the half. The big stories here in the first half. And it's been a staple of North Carolina State basketball ever since Kevin Keats took over here. Jack Clark, the nice find to Casey Marcel on the corner. And then turning defense into offense. Casey Marcel getting out on the break, taking himself for the easy bucket. And North Carolina just hasn't been strong with the basketball, which has allowed NC State to be able to create offense off of their defense. And those transition points have been all in favor of the Wolfpack here at PNC Arena this afternoon. 12 points for the Wolfpack off of eight Carolina turnovers. That's one more turnover than the Tar Heels committed the entire game, first time they played at the Dean Dome. 
Shot clock off, final 12 seconds. Ball in the hands of Jarkel Joyner. Now to Smith. With lockdown, Leakey defending. Here they go to Burns with one second. He shoots it. Off the mark, and that ends the first 20 minutes. They're the turnovers you're talking about, Corey. That's been the difference in this game. However, North Carolina has survived by getting to the free throw line, 9 of 11 at the stripe, and has allowed them to stick around, only trailing by one point, even though North Carolina State has not turned the basketball over once. Pack players, including basically their front line, DJ Burns, Jack Clark, and Ebenezer Dewana, all three with two fouls going up against Armando Baycott and company. And that's one of the areas where Baycott puts so much pressure on opposing defenses. He's priority number one to stop him first, as we see. I like this matchup for Hubert Davis going into the post of Leaky Black to take advantage of his size, but Jaquavion Smith able to hold his ground. Nice play by uh, somebody at the end of the Carolina bench. As the ball goes out of bounds, 20 seconds into the second half with Corey Alexander. I'm Doug Sherman. Dougie Fresh, I got a chance to hang out with two ACC legends at halftime. Okay. Other than you. No, One, no, no. <laughs> Chris Corciani, of nice. course. Fire from Fire and Ice. And then my big fella, Chris Washburn in the building today. So getting the opportunity to hang out with some ACC royalty here. Coming to check out a huge rivalry game. I love it. And I've heard David Thompson's in the building. Derek Wittenberg's in the building. They took part in. There's your guy. There's my man. And he makes sure he's got his name on the back of his T-shirt <laughs> so everybody knows who's in the building. Just in case you couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Caleb Love attacks. Ball tipped up. Casey Morsell rips it away for State. Great job by DJ Burns just staying vertical on that possession. The contact but still staying vertical it means there's no foul. Here's D.J. Burns sizing up the defense, now going to work against Baycott. A couple of big boys going at it. This time, number 30 and White gets the better of Baycott. And D.J. Did really just displacing Armando Baycott, putting the body on him, and then moving him back far enough for him to be able to get the jump shot off. Last year's Big South Conference Player of the Year at Winthrop. Spent three years there going back home. He's a South Carolina product. And everyone thought Kevin Keats was crazy that DJ Burns didn't fit his style of play, etc. But they're all happy that he brought him in now. Baycott, no. Leaky Black keeps it alive. Nance has it. Able to bring it back out, and they go back inside to Nance, working on Clark. The turnaround, and Clark's going to be called for his third personal foul. Well, we mentioned you're rolling. No, no, let me just say this. You said, now here's Witt with a lot of excitement, and then you said, and David Thompson beside him. Did you, you got that confused, buddy. David Thompson may be the greatest ACC basketball player of all time. You need to have a little more voice inflection when you talk about David Thompson, and Witt's my guy. Love him. But when you talk about David Thompson, you got to put a little more voice inflection on that. You were too casual with that, my friend. Agreed. <laughs> In explanation, I know Derek. I don't know David. So that's where that came from. It was not a slight on you David. Do not, I agree. You do not have to know David Thompson to speak <laughs> in nope. a certain manner when you mention his name. Mr. Thompson is in the building. There you go. Jarkel Joyner fouled by R.J. Davis going after his miss, or will it go the other way? No. Nope. Our guy Lorenzo Charles was able to slam in on the alley oop. Yeah. And then, of course, David Thompson played in what is considered to be, of course, the greatest game of all time the 1974 ACC Tournament Championship against Maryland. And, of course, went on to be number one pick and everything else that you could ask for. And his teammate at that time, Tom Burleson, is sitting just a couple of rows behind us here at center court. Of course, they won that national title. Under Norm Sloan in 74, all sorts of history here. It really is something to uh, dive into the Wolfpack basketball lore. Caleb Love, no. Baycott after the rebound. Count the basket in one. And most likely the third foul on D.J. Burns. And North Carolina's had a number of opportunities on the offensive glass here to start this second half, but unable to take advantage of them. This time Armando Baycott gets the rebound and then gathers himself, goes up strong, able to finish with the left hand, get the hoop, the contact, and opportunity for the M1. No sign yet from the Wolfpack bench that Burns would come out at this point. 
Baycott completes the three-point play. He's got 11 points to lead the Tar Heels. And North Carolina off of made free throws. You see them picking up in that full-court pressure to see if they can find a way to get the basketball out of the hands of Joyner, which didn't work on that possession. Looks like it's going to end up being a foul on Baycott. And that is his first. That's not where you want Baycott picking up a foul. 20-something feet from the basket trying to intercept the pass. But again, it's just his first. Burns and Clark stay in the game for NC State, each playing with three fouls. And the crowd starts to come to life for the people's choice. DJ Burns back and down. Davis the rebound. He'll dribble up. Once again, I believe Hubert Davis will live with DJ Burns making one out of every two post opportunities in comparison to double teaming and leaving the shooters wide open. That pass was kicked by Clark. Shot clock. Move to 20 seconds. This is our third tie of the ball game, Corey. 36 apiece. Wolfpack led by a point at the half. It's only been a two possession game right from the start. It really has. And again, it's been the points off turnovers for NC State. It's been the free throws from North Carolina, which was a huge discrepancy in the first game between the two. But the Tar Heels have done a great job getting back to the free throw line here today. Black. Driving, gets his own miss, goes up strong for two. Our seventh lead change has the Tar Heels back on top. And everyone thinks that it's just Armando Baycott that does the job offensively on the glass, rebounding, but it's more than Baycott. It's Pete Nance, it's Leaky Black. They have a number of guys that get in the mix when it comes to offensive rebounding. Yeah, Black averages 6.2 per game, while Nance is right at six per game. And to Quavion Smith wants a, wants a foul on that play, but Ted Valentine saying that Leaky Black got his hands on the basketball on that one, so NC State will maintain possession. Joiner into Dewana, who gives it back to the old Miss grad transfer, who glances at the shot clock, which is now down to five. Joiner puts up a tough shot and buries it. It is a smart play by Joshua Joiner, making sure he kept R.J. Davis on his back. And getting to his spot for the mid-range pull-up. That's 11 for Joyner. He leads the Wolf Pack. He and Smith both in double figures. Baycott. Out to Love. Caleb Love. Beautiful shot. 40-38 Carolina. Caleb Love attacking the basket, getting downhill, not settling for the jump shot. A much better player when he's not settling. Joyner pulls up. Five minutes gone here in the second half. Carolina with the ball in a two-point lead. Love with a bad pass. Casey Morsell the takeaway. And he makes him pay at the other end. It's a great individual effort by Casey Morsell to come up with the steal on that possession. Baycott through contact now has 13 points and he's got that off the dribble when you have someone like Ebenezer Duana trying to guard him who he knows is going to go for the pump fakes once he gets to that spin move he's got a number of options in his bag right there Smith nicely done off the window Turquavian now with 12 points Love to the corner. Black with shot fake. And now they clear out. Give Baycott some room against Dewana. Dewana stays on the floor and gets the rebound. Great job defensively by Dewana on that possession, allowing ba making Baycott shoot over the top. Corner three by Morsell. A little strong. Here come the Tar Heels the other way. Caleb Love has it taken away, but he was fouled in the act of shooting. 
Jack Clark. We will talk family ties. What his grandfather did that was so noteworthy. As well, a Hall of Fame player at NAIA Millersville University. Averaged 19 points, 17 rebounds for his career. Mr. Parker died in 2018, but uh, his grandson, I'm sure, knows all the stories about what his granddad did back in the day. I'm sure he does, and he also knows not to argue with the officials throughout this game. I'm sure that's one of the things his grandfather left with him. Make sure you keep your mouth closed and go out there and play hard, but don't be a distraction, especially talking to the officials. No doubt, Corey. And for more Black History storytelling and coverage, stream the Black History Always collection on ESPN+. 13-22 remaining second half in this rivalry game. Number 23, North Carolina State trailing by a point to North Carolina. Pete Nance has just picked up his second foul for the Tar Heels. And here we go again. Burns working against Nance. He's nimble. He's got good hands, good feet. He can score. He absolutely is. He has such a soft touch. You know, of course, DJ was a guy that reclassed up, skipped his senior high school, went to Tennessee, didn't work out for him there. And if you talked about him being player of the year at Winthrop a season ago as Pete Nance steps up and knocks down a three for the Tar Heels, which have been few and far between throughout this game. But you know, DJ Burns was in Knoxville and on the team with Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield and company. They spent a few weeks at number one in the country. So this young man just never had the opportunity to get on the floor, but he was a big time recruit coming out of high school in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Caleb Love for three. And a great job by Pete Nance setting the screen in the backcourt. Casey Morcell, DJ Burns having a conversation. That's DJ Burns' responsibility to let his guard know that it's a screen there. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult for Casey Morcell to pressure 94 feet against a guy with the basketball. Not this time for Burns. Love with his head up. Watching to see if Leaky Black came free. Instead, he throws it out of bounds into the Carolina bench. Tenth turnover for UNC. Eight minutes gone in the second half. The Tar Heels holding on to a three-point lead. DJ Burns starting to establish himself on the block, taking his time, going to his moves, and getting buckets. Six points for him here in the second half, but as Burns is running down the floor, he doesn't call out the screen, and Pete Nance gets a body on Casey Morcell, knocking him down, and Caleb Love was able to step up and knock down the three, and then Pete Nance knocking down the three of his own. North Carolina able to take this lead from beyond the arc. Joyner and Smith in the backcourt along with Morcell, and then Burns and Clark in there, both playing with three personal fouls. Clark off the catch and shoot. Nothing but net, but it was the outside of the net. Great job by Puck Johnson as Quavion Smith is down. You have to remember, Smith left the first game between these two teams on a stretcher. And that was on a flagrant foul. In transition on Leaky Black. I asked her Quavion this morning about that, and he said he was okay and said that he was at the hospital deep into the night but was back home in his own bed by the end of the night. Good to see him back up. I'm not sure to Quavion can stay in the game at this point after the stopping the action. Watch the left side of your screen. There he is going down, but we didn't see what occurred. And so now Pat Driscoll, one of the three officials, along with Clarence Armstrong, will go over and see if they can find what happened on video. Not sure if the officials have a different look at it, but very difficult. The best we look, the best look that we had, you can't see anything in that one. Not certain as if they have a different view. 
of any contact. There was contact, whatever happened on that possession with the Quavion Smith. It looks like the Quavion Smith on that possession actually tried to really put a body on Pete Nance. Nance is running down the floor. As we get an opportunity here, once again, you see Pete Nance running down the center of the floor. The Quavion Smith is back defensively and really steps into the pass. Ooh, wait a minute now. Does Pete Nance lower the hand on that? Boy, I can't it's, tell. It, it's hard to see from that angle, but you do see Pete Nance's arm come down. And if his arm comes down and hits the Quavion in an area that very sensitive area. That would be bad. That would be bad, but that would be enough to take someone to their knees. And the reaction that Tequavion had on that possession. Right. Well, based on the reaction, you would think that or something similar occurred. But if you can't actually see the action, can you penalize him for the reaction? Well, if you watch once again, and again, it's not the greatest quality, but as you see, as they, you see the two players in the mix, but as the contact happens, you see the right arm of Pete Nance. I don't know. Your eyes would be better than mine. And again, I thought Terquavion came away from it, holding more of his stomach or midsection above the waist. And, and that very well could be the case. So the officials are going to come over and tell Corey what they have determined or not been able to determine, or they want to look at our video. So Teddy Valentine and Clarence Armstrong join us here courtside. So we get an opportunity to look at it and because of the quality it's difficult to see anything on that and now as we slow it down and look at it Nance's arm does not look like it is down during the contact his arm does come back up and too difficult to determine anything from the officials. Yeah, and with as... that, they're going to walk away from this with nothing. And again, just not you know, just not enough video evidence to be able to support anything happening. And so in the meantime, Terquavion comes out of the ball game as you mentioned. He sits at least for the moment with 1135 remaining. Carolina 49, State 46. Tar Heels have made their last couple of three-point shots, as you see. Nance going inside, challenging Burns. And on the second effort, it's Puff Johnson. Big bucket from Puff Johnson. Puff Johnson had a very good game here a season ago. Leaky Black was injured. And Puff Johnson came in and gave North Carolina a big effort off the bench and to start the second half of that game. And which term came out to be a win. Yeah, that was his career high, still his career high, 16 points for Johnson against the Wolfpack year a year ago. This, by the way, the largest lead of the afternoon for Carolina. Here goes Burns, Davis defending down, helping Nance. No stopping that, though. The People's Choice here in Raleigh scores again. He's got a dozen. I like that name. I like the name you're giving my guy, DJ Burns, right there, the People's Choice. I can respect that. I like it. Every time he touches the ball as Joyner trips Davis, you can just feel energy in the building picking up. It's like a crescendo. Here's our next ACC Big 12 Monday doubleheader. 7 Eastern, Kyle Filipowski and Duke host L. Ellis and Louisville at Cameron Indoor. And then Jalen Wilson and number five Kansas take on number 22. TCU. We've also got women's college basketball for you tomorrow night. Two of the top teams in the Pac-12 will square off over on ESPN2. Number three, Stanford hosting number 16, UCLA. That'll begin at 9 o'clock Eastern time, 6 local. R.J. Davis for three. And now North Carolina starting to find some rhythm from beyond the three-point arc. The first three R.J. Davis has made in this game at 26 in the matchup between these two teams. Back in January. Loose ball. 
Here come the Tar Heels. Love crosses over Smith, misses the shot, and a foul on the rebound goes against Armando Baycott. That is personal number two on Baycott. He and the Tar Heels have controlled the glass here today, but not on this sequence. And a strong take by Caleb Love. It looks like it slipped out of his hand, unable to be able to finish that, but Baycott with two hands in the back of Jack Clark, picking up the foul. Let's see if they go to Burns again. I told you in the first half, Corey, I don't think you can watch him play basketball without smiling yourself. Well, he's absolutely fun to watch and, of course, very productive what he's been for Kevin Keats, especially all of 2023. A nice find from Caleb Love, but North Carolina wastes an opportunity on the break. Uh, you know Terquavion wanted to shoot that. Davis closed out nicely, and after Smith killed his dribble, he couldn't get the shot off. First turnover of the ball game for the Wolfpack. I believe after that possession, that's enough evidence for me to go as far as to say Leaky Black is the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. I mean, after what we saw happen with he and Hunter Tyson, he held Hunter Tyson to just two field goal attempts, and then Isaiah Wong to only eight points last time out, and plays like that, and Tequavion Smith is 5 of 16 from the field in this game with Leaky Black defending him. Tough shot against the big by Jarkel Joyner. But that's been the issue for North Carolina. Who else is going to step up and defend? Leaky Black can win his matchup defensively, but it's normally someone else that hurts the Tar Heels. Baycott gathers, goes around Burns. Missed it. Burns saves it. Here comes Terquavion Smith. And now the other two Wolfpack get to the front court with eight and a half on the clock. Joiner from the foul line. Good looking stroke for the grad transfer out of Abbeville, Mississippi. Davis wide open. Johnson fights for it, but Clark takes it away. State with a chance to tie or take the lead. It's a Quavion Smith wanting to get the basketball into the hot hands of Jarkel Joyner, encouraging his teammate to get going down the floor. Jack Clark makes it seven unanswered points for State. Love. Fouled on the shot, and he will shoot three. And our Wendy's wooden watch, not the only player in this game we should be talking about here. Absolutely not. To Quavion Smith, also a candidate for the wooden award this season and also a candidate for ACC Player of the Year, as we see it's been Jarkel Joyner, to Quavion Smith's teammate, who's really been the guy that stepped up here as of late. The 7-0 run, which has now been answered with free throws by Caleb Love, who was fouled on a three-point shot going into the timeout. Love knocks down all three to take a two-point lead. Yeah, he's got 16, or... 16 points now to lead all scores. The junior from St. Louis. We've got a whistle and a foul off the ball, and it's against Baycott. Much to the delight of the folks here in Raleigh. And I believe that's that's only going to be three on Baycott. I thought he picked up his third with the hands in the back of Jack Clark, but good thing for North Carolina, allowing Alamondo Baycott to be able to stay on the floor during this stretch. But of course, going to have to be very careful, especially defending DJ Burns. Burns through Baycott's chest for two. But it's a big difference playing with three fouls and playing with two fouls because you can be much more aggressive, especially at this part of the game when you have two. Armando Baycott probably could have stood his ground even more once DJ Burns turned into him, but cannot risk picking up that fourth foul and having to go sit down still with close to seven minutes remaining. Ernest Ross into the game for State. Number 24 in white, trying to defend Puff Johnson, who knocks down the shot right in front of him. Puff Johnson has given North Carolina great minutes here, especially in the second half, coming off the bench. Seven points off the bench for the junior from Moon Township, Pennsylvania. 
Joiner, quick first step, hangs in the air, finishes and draws the foul. Man, the quickness in this backcourt for State will take your breath away. Absolutely. Jarkel Joyner has the ability go, to go from 0 to 100 real quick, and he shows it off on that possession, beating R.J. Davis to the spot, getting into the air, and, of course, concentrating on finishing off the bucket. Now you might wonder why a kid from Mississippi started his college career at Cal State Bakersfield. It was his first offer, and Jarkel's father, Stacy, is a barber, and for years he had cut the hair of Bakersfield's head coach, Rod Burns. I read the Rod Barnes, former Ole Miss player and coach, and that was the connection that got him to the West Coast. He's got State back in front by a point. Love against Morsell. Able to lose him, but lost the ball and was fouled. Caleb Love had a little something to say to the partisans behind us. Well, I, I would agree that he's probably had a lot said to him throughout this game also. No question. <laughs> it was not a coincidence that uh, he and RJ and who was it, Leakey, the three of them came out with their beats on for pregame warm-ups. That's a veteran smart move in this building for Atar here. Absolutely. Love, who just made three in a row, misses on the front end. This afternoon over on ACC Network, the Tar Heel women square off against Wake Forest in Carmichael Arena. They look to bounce back from Thursday's loss to NC State coverage at 4 Eastern. It's getting loud in here. Oh, uh, well, you know, there's always something on the line. Again, two missed free throws in the second half. There's always going to be something on the line. Not sure what it is here at PNC <laughs> Arena. <laughs> I can remember back in the day, I, maybe it was some type of chicken sandwich or a biscuit. Not sure what it is today. This is our 10th tie of the ball game. Just what you would expect with these two rivals playing with so much on the line. Baycott goes down, Burns attacks, and banks it in. I asked DJ Burns pre-game, are you ready? He just looked at me and he flashed that big smile, said, you already know I'm ready, <laughs> especially for this one. Davis, no. Nance crashing the glass. Big rebound for Ernest Ross, the sophomore. Off the bench, it leads to a run out and a reverse. Jarkel Joyner with 20. Ross the block. Here comes Morsell. Big sequence for the pack. Give him three more. Timeout Carolina. 67-60 as the place goes nuts. The Wolfpack are eight of their last eight field goals, and Jarkel Joyner coming over to let me know, I told you, I told you. And what he told me was, he and Sequavion Smith are the best backcourt in the ACC. This young man has a tremendous amount of confidence, and he's playing with it right now. Yeah, Joyner's got 23 points to lead all scores. He's now 71 points shy of 2,000 for his career. And the Wolfpack have really been knocking down shots, Corey. They've made their last eight attempts from the floor. Shooting better than 60%. Davis blocked. Burns got a piece. Baycott tried to clean it up, but a whistle before the putback. The foul is on. Ernest Ross and the seventh team foul against North Carolina State.
Coming up next at 3 Eastern here on ESPN, Marcus Sasser and number two Houston host Kendrick Davis and Memphis who are on Joe Lenardi's bubble. Another big game with two weeks left in the regular season. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich on the line right here on this free throw. And the crowd will get the chicken sandwich. Armando Baycott missing back-to-back -back free throws in the second half. And more importantly, NC State an opportunity to increase their lead after making their last eighth field goal. And Corey, this is the largest lead of the afternoon for either team. Joyner will begin with that quick first step and the step back for two more. A 9-0 run for State. R.J. Davis kicks it out to Black. Five to shoot. Black over Smith. Puff Johnson, no. Baycott, yes, and a foul against Burns. That is number four on NC State center. That'll take Hundo Baycat the free throw line. But a 9-0 state run over the last few minutes, Corey, has given them a little separation. And Baycott answering with the three-point play, allowing North Carolina to set up their full court pressure. And forcing the timeout, Darkell Joyner. We'll take a break as well. State holding on to a six-point lead. ECC. And more importantly, they would be 0-9 versus quad one, and that's going to be the biggest kicker for the Tar Heels moving forward. As, as Joey Brack has told us earlier, all of their wins, quality wins, have been either at home or on a neutral site, none on the road. Got to get it across, and that they do. State with the basketball, and oh. Ross missed the dunk and then hung on the rim, and you can't do that. But Hubert Davis wants a technical foul on that. And not just the miss, as our officials will gather and talk about it. But it will not be a technical foul. It will simply just be offensive goaltending. But Hubert Davis was adamant on the sideline regarding that being a technical foul for hanging on the rim. Mac McClung wouldn't have missed that dunk. No, he would not. Casey Morsell, the best perimeter defender for State? Uh, he's the best guy to guard Caleb Love because of Caleb Love's size, but it's hard to say that they have a better perimeter defender than Jarkel Joyner. Davis, no. Morsell secures the rebound, and now State in no hurry. But the reality behind it is they have three elite guards in the backcourt for NC State on both ends of the floor. The reason why this team has excelled since the turn of the year, 2023, even though they've lost two of their last three, still playing great basketball. D.J. Burns. Love gets a step on Morsell. Burns comes over to help. Forces the miss. Smith with numbers throws it up. And the slam by Joyner. Eighteen of his twenty-seven points coming in the second half. Poked away by Burns. Ross, can he track it down? He does. Two more sell. Everything going. NC State's way.
It has been a pack attack. Jarkel Joyner from the beautiful five from his backcourt running mate to Quavian Smith lobbing it up. And the point guard going way up high. Then Smith once again finding Ross who tracks the basketball down. Back to Casey Morsell for the layup. And it has been a 15 to three run for the Wolfpack since 536 remaining in this second half, spanning over four minutes. And the Wolfpack has truly shown why they've had success in the ACC this season and why they will be a scary team in March. The last time out, Jarkel Joyner against Syracuse became just the fourth Wolfpack player with a triple-double. He's been even better here this afternoon. He absolutely has been even better, not just offensively either. Defensively, he's done the job on R.J. Davis. R.J. Davis, who had 26 in the first time out, has not been able to get off against Jarkel Joyner. But then offensively, Jarkel Joyner has taken over this game. Out of the timeout, they get a decent look for Love, but he couldn't make it. Held ball. And the possession arrow goes to State. The game was tied at 60 with just over six minutes on the clock. And in the last four minutes and 50 seconds, it's been a 15 to three run by the Wolfpack. I've been coming to this building for 14 years. I have never seen it like this really? in coming in of course we saw the line wrapped around the corner we mm -hmm. knew how big of a game it was but to be in here and hear the decibel level that they are getting to in this building especially off of the joiner dunk it's been amazing a great college basketball environment and on a sunday not sharing the stage with any other college basketball in the acc R.J. Davis gives the foul, Corey. That is his fourth. In an effort to send Ernest Ross, just a 61% foul shooter, to the line. All smiles for the Wolfpack at the moment with 58.7 left on the clock. Davis I think the defender may have gotten a piece that was Casey Morsell with a block one of four players on this Wolfpack squad that have 20 blocks on this season Casey Morsell a guard with over 20 blocks on the season yeah, it's something that they are second in the ACC behind only Syracuse without that dominant rim protector but even though a double-digit lead. Casey Morsell continues to get the job done. Less than 50 seconds on the clock, but not giving anything to North Carolina. Playing this one out all the way through the final buzzer. So Ross back at the line. Misses the front end again. The Tar Heels cannot waste any time. The long three by Love misfires. Baycott tracks it down. Puff Johnson for three. Love ties up Smith, and it'll stay at this end of the floor. North Carolina State came into this game as an eight seed, according to Joe Lenardi as Caleb Love hits the three and we get a timeout called. Love now has 20 points. While the Tar Heels were on the wrong side of the bubble coming into the day. So much importance on this rivalry game and here's what Carolina's looking at right now, Corey. Well, this was a great opportunity for North Carolina to get a quality win, to get some, something going on their quad one. Unable to be able to make that happen today here in Raleigh. But a statement game 
for the Wolfpack, letting everyone in the ACC know that they are here to stay. It has not been a fluke. It is real. And you look at North Carolina's remaining schedule at Notre Dame Wednesday. Of course, Virginia coming to the Dean Dome on Saturday at Florida State and ending the season with Duke at home. But not many opportunities for those quality wins remaining for the Heels. Yeah, you're almost getting the sense that unless the uh, Tar Heels make a lot of noise in Greensboro, they're going to miss the field. I believe that's going to be the case. They're going to have to make a deep run in the ACC tournament in Greensboro to get back to where they would be in a, a, at large bit if they're unable to win the ACC tournament. Well, it doesn't happen very often where the preseason AP number one team misses the NCAA tournament field. And each of those three occurrences were before the field expanded to what it is now. Maybe. Carolina possibly could not be one of the uh, 68 dancing next month. But you see the top team on that list, NC State, 1974-75, a year after winning the national championship in 1974. And if there's anyone that would love to put a nail in that coffin for the Tar Heels, there's no one that would love that more than the Wolfpack. Now Joey Brackett said coming into this, Carolina was going to need to win four of its last five in the regular season to feel comfortable going into the ACC tournament. And if that is indeed the case, they're going to have to run the table now to have any sort of comfort before they get to Greensboro. They absolutely will have to. And again, and they're capable. It's not as though this team is not capable. But coming into this building in this environment today, you've got to give a lot of credit to the Wolfpack faithful. Of course, the team, the guys that got the job done on the court, Kevin Keats and his staff, but this crowd was amazing here this afternoon. Ross and Johnson got tied up on the free throw. It almost looked like a possible hook and hold. Ted Valentine over to the scorer's table. He's got double technical fouls on Ross and Johnson on this play. They will be offsetting. Final 20 seconds. Love with another three. Pressure broken. Morsell holds on to the basketball. And will the Tar Heels let it run out? He is triple teamed. And Kevin Keats was actually trying to call a timeout on that one. But that'll do it. North Carolina State takes down UNC. North Carolina 0-9 versus quad one teams on the season. NC State 4-5. NC State in the field right now. The Tar Heels are not. Final score 77-69. Next.